We're back under green. Still right with you to two with the car length behind him. Five still on your door. Getting help from the eight. Still there, five. Half a car went between you. Eight right on him with a car length and a half behind the eight. Half to the two. Spotter chatter. It's like air traffic control. But the driver's got to drive that car. Well, by theory, they steer the car. I think that I feel like the spotters drive the cars anymore. They're the ones seeing what lanes are building that energy and getting momentum. And then they're relaying that to the drivers. So they're really calling the shots. Did you see how big a push Kyle Busch gave Kyle Larson? Really shot him out so far that Kyle had to elect to go down. Now what's he do here, Tony? Does he pull up, make this block, or stay on the bottom? I think he just sits there and figures out which line is building energy, and then you, you choose that. He didn't do it there. He thought about it. He pulled back down. I don't think he liked the way Kyle Busch was pushing it that aggressive. Kyle's going to try. Larson is going to try to stay as clean as he can here, but try to keep this track position as long as he can. If he loses it, I, I say he goes to the back. But if he stays up front, I bet he tries to stay there. A lot of pushing. 20 cars in that draft. B.J. McLeod got back out on track, but he's half a lap down. I do think this is a scenario with Kyle Larson where the reason he's staying there is he wants to gather as much information as he can, but he doesn't want to do it with a lot of risk. If his car didn't feel good, he wouldn't stay there. He wouldn't elect to put himself in that position. But as long as that car feels and drives the way he wants it to, he is gathering knowledge that's going to help him for Sunday. And remember, last night he was a tenth and a half off of Alex Bowman's pole winning speed. And the difference in those two setups may well be the difference between the car Bowman had trouble driving tonight and the car that Kyle Larson is leading with tonight. Very true. Whole different ball game. This one, this duel is whole different ball game. We we saw those Ford strong the last one. These Chevys are showing some serious muscle. That outside line. Daniel Suarez is giving him some shots. I think if they can get out ahead, they're going to move back down and probably try to get in front of Kyle Larson. Pair those three up. Kyle Larson trying to do what nobody's done since Chase Elliott in 2017. Win the pole and then win the dual race on Thursday. Huge run down the back stretch. Watch what it does though. Watch what it sets it up. They both of those cars got out so far. Here comes Austin Sindrick to the bumper of the 10. Nine in tow. That creates some slack there. They're ahead now, but look at the momentum on the outside stacked up six cars deep. The thing that happens is when the five and the 10 are getting a run like that, it looks so massive and they're able to gain so much ground, but the 10 car can't clear that outside line. The, the lead car did, but as soon as it pulls the second car back, then there's no energy to push that five car of Kyle Larson forward anymore, and then it just loses that momentum. And now it swaps sides. Now that outside lane then gets that run back. I like where Kyle Larson's at, though. He's in a protected spot. I've always said, ride on the bottom and dance on the top. And he's riding. He's trying to protect 